Hey, my name is Lo Flung, and welcome back to the Campsy Center for Electronic Music Research. And today we're going to be getting underneath the surface and into the water with some affordable DIY hydrophones. Hydrophones and contact microphones are an excellent addition to any Sonic toolkit. They have a very organic, crunchy, rich tone and texture. Sounds that can sound like this. Or like this. Or even like this. Just in case you didn't know what a contact microphone is, it's a type of microphone that picks up vibrations via a small disc called a piezo. This disc picks up the vibrations through contact with solid objects. This can include fences, wire, and even things like industrial engines. What we'll be doing today is making a contact microphone and coating it in silicon to make it waterproof turning it into a hydrophone. I've tried to make this video as simple as possible. However, there are multiple steps, so feel free to pause and take notes at any point. For this project, you will need an assortment of tools. As always, some of these tools will be useful in and outside of the audio space. There are links to all the items used below in the video description. So, the bare minimum you'll need is a piezo disc, RCA cable, electrical tape, 100% silicon, and a Stanley knife. Some things that will make this easier and make the microphone more durable are solder, a soldering iron, a soldering iron holder, one of these clippy holder things, a cutting mat, a corking gun, and a small magnet. If you can afford to do so, buy yourself a few piezo discs. Doing this for the first time can be a little bit problematic and occasionally the discs can get broken. So to save yourself a long trip back to the shop or waiting a week for the post, grab, grab a few, grab three or four, five or six, whatever you can afford. Step one, remove the outer plastic shell. Use your Stanley knife and slowly pry out the plastic ring. Take it slowly because any damage to the disc inside can result in the contact mic not working. It'll be attached with glue and some are easier to remove than others, but be really careful not to snap, bend or scratch the disc. As you can see here, I did scratch one of the discs a little bit. We'll have to wait and see if this actually works. Step two, take your RCA cable and slice one end with a Stanley knife. Cut on a 45 degree angle to expose the wires. There are two sets of ultra thin wires. One you'll see immediately and the other inside a smaller rubber shield. Gaining access to the wire will require a little bit of finesse. I often grab onto the wire and pull lightly on the rubber coating to expose some more wire. Take your time, this part is fragile. If you muck it up, simply cut another slice a bit further down the cable. The second wire you want is inside the inner rubber coated shield. You'll need to slice the inner coating slowly until you reveal the wires. Twist each of the two wires to create two solid single pieces. What you want is to have enough of the inside and outside wire to attach them to the piezo disc wires. Use scissors to trim the wires neatly to about half a centimeter length. Step three. Plug in your soldering iron and give it five to 10 minutes to heat up. I should also mention that you should be doing this outdoors or in a very well ventilated area. 
If you don't have solder, simply wrap the wires around each other and use electrical tape to maintain the connection. This is not recommended because the connection will be fragile, but it does save some money and some time on using a soldering iron. Okay, so if you do have a soldering iron, solder the wires together. So, looking at the colours of the piezo wires and the RCA wires, you want to match the black wire from the piezo to the outer wire of the RCA. Then, you want to connect the red wire from the piezo to the inner, smaller coated wire of the RCA. Now, just a heads up, I am incredibly bad at soldering. So if I can do this, I'm sure you can too. I'm using this holder thing to hold the wires in place. If you don't have one of these, it might be a little more tricky, but it's still possible. Step four. Once you've made the connection, plug in your piezo into a recorder or interface. It's time to test that it works. Unfortunately, I accidentally deleted this audio recording, so you won't be able to hear me testing them. But as you can see, there is level, so it works. You now have a working contact microphone. Congratulations! Something that I like to do after I've conducted a test is wrap up the exposed wires with electrical tape. It's very important that the two separate wires do not touch and make a connection. This can cause the microphone to not work. So, wrap the electrical tape around one connection followed by the next connection. Perfect. 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 Step 5. Here is where things get really, really messy. So be prepared. I've warned you. Get your silicon. Now, it's really important you make sure this is 100% silicon. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a huge mess and this sculpting process will not work. Trust me, don't try it. Get 100% silicon. Slice open the silicon and pour some out onto a plastic tray or a container. I've used a corking gun to assist in this, but you can use anything to push the silicon out, like a hammer or a screwdriver, whatever works. Once you pour out the silicon, get a layer of soapy water on your hands. Shake off your hands so they aren't dripping too much, but rather have a thin layer of soap on them. Grab your contact mic and pop it into the silicon. Sculpt a layer around the wire and the disc. You'll need to be quite nimble because this is a very messy process and it's actually quite difficult. Getting the balance of light touch on the silicon and soapy water is key. Once you have made sure that everything is covered and sealed, set it aside to dry for 24 to 48 hours. Congratulations, you've made a hydrophone. Now comes the fun part, taking it out into the field and doing some recordings. I'm going to jump on my bike, go for a ride and try and find some places to do some recordings. So let's have a look. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Uh, I'm going to be 
making more of these into the future so be sure to come back and check them out uh, join the discord if you haven't already and if you have the means to sign up to my patreon thank you so much see you later